Hey guys, what's going on? So I uh, filmed today. I wasn't even planning on it. It's Saturday. I wasn't really, I didn't really have much to do. And I said, you know what? I got some shit to do with the truck. So we're going to work on the truck today. So I already did some things. And again, I wasn't even planning on filming. But I was like, you know what? The hell with it. You guys like this truck? Let me show you some more of it. Show you some of the new things I got for it. Because I know I haven't filmed in a while. Because all I've been focused on is this. So one of the new things I got about two months ago, I got this nice new grill. Uh, these lights. Now these were here. The lower ones were there. But I got this nice new mesh grill. I don't know how well you can see it because the lighting here is not the greatest. But I think it looks pretty sick. Especially with those lights. They're just wired up with all the rest of the amber lights on the truck. So you can see it's just a nice little mesh grill. Still there, like grayish that it came. Then I'm gonna sand it down and actually paint it to the same as this. So I have a color match grill. What's gonna suck about that is all these little holes. I'm gonna make sure I at least get the front nice. Let me shut these lights off. But I figured you'd like to see that. And then I got some other stuff to show you I did. First thing, under the hood. Um, another thing I'm working on is, so these aftermarket headlights, they pretty much suck. <laughs> I don't know why, but you can't see jack crap with them. I should get you a night video how bad they are. Like, they're, they're horrible. And I found out, I finally pulled this one apart today to see what kind of bulbs they take. And they're an H1. It's the weirdest looking thing. Here, I might have a picture if I can show you. It's so the weirdest looking light bulb I think I've ever seen. I've never seen an H1. I've seen H11s, H13s. Can't see if you can see that. That is an H1. That's what they look like on the back side. And that's how much space I got to work with. So those are the bulbs I'm going to try and replace with some LEDs. Yeah, they're, they're a weird light bulb. i never seen nothing like that. Another thing I did, finally, after months, as you can tell by my mess. So this truck I put, uh, it, it's an off-road truck. We'll go with that. It's, uh, it is deleted for off-road. You know, we swap everything back on when we take it on the highway. You know what I'm saying? But it has a sinister diesel. Make all the jokes in the world you want about the blue thing. I don't care, the kit works. That's how I look at it. Whatever. That's in the past now, whatever. But I got this full sinister diesel delete kit. And now I'll show you this. Try not to use my profanity. This effing part goes right there. As you can see, mine's not there anymore. Now I read online, these things are known for the o ring to fail. Look. Focus. Trying to get this thing to focus. Yeah, let me put it on a solid surface. Look, the O-ring's already got a blowout spot. You see the pink on there? That's because it was leaking out of hair. Here and there, slowly, slowly. So I got online, did a little bit of research. You know, we have this amazing thing nowadays called the internet. You can just search any problem you have. So I did, I got online, did a little bit of research, like other guys having this issue and found out there's actually a solution to this problem, which is very nice. Oh, I don't remember where I got the part from. I'll have to look online. But if you look right here, that piece, is there dirt on there? This piece here, I'll try and find the link for you guys. But this fixes the issue that that other piece causes. So that other piece relies on this bracket and this here, but the bolts down here just pretty much shoved together and hope it holds type of deal. Like this seals against it like that, against it, and that's it. That's the only thing that holds it back, which is kind of stupid. So I found online this piece, this little guy right here, the O-ring goes in way deeper. It goes to like here where there's a good heavy seal that's better than the other one. And it has this thing on top, and there's one on the bottom that you can't see. And it's just a clamp. 
and you tighten down the two screws, which for some reason I was missing one, so I found one in the shop that worked. And it holds that on there, so it can't pull itself apart like the other one does. Now the other one wasn't looking bad, but this is a solution that makes me a little more comfortable. That it's not going to leak like it was. Because the O-ring's way in about here, where the tip of my finger is. And then this on top. So that really, I think that helps out a lot. And I did keep using this bracket because, you know, you need the support for this tube. So that's the solution for that. Because this does have a new South Bend, um, I think it's like a hybrid clutch. It's part dual disc, or it's, it's a dual disc. It's part composite, part organic. It's not one or the other. It's like a hybrid style that... It's rated for 650 horsepower. And, you know, while we're at it, I'm gonna give you my honest, um, hmm, let's see. How many miles did I put on this clutch now? This clutch, oops, I accidentally zoomed, has 1,638 miles. Cause I reset it right after I put it in for the break in stuff. So. so this will be my, we'll say 1500 mile review on the, how I feel about the um, South Bend dual disc. Sorry, there we go. So my thoughts on it, I like it. It holds up the power, it's very easy to drive. It's not, it's not very much, it's not that much more aggressive, there's the words, than stock. Like, it's, you barely notice the difference at driving it every day compared to stock. It's really not heavy or anything. Now, what do I not like about it? This one, it's loud. Like, the clutch, unengaged. And I read about this online before I got one because I was on the fence between a Vel Air and a South Bend. Now, South Bend holds a little more power, but the Valair is a lot quieter because they have like silencer rings and stuff. This clutch, when you let it out in neutral, it, it sounds like the transmission's about to explode. It's like... Alright guys, this is what I was talking about. I'm actually in the truck now. Right now it's in neutral. I got the clutch all the way in. Uh, I don't know if you guys can hear us or not. I just wanted to show you that's the noise I'm talking about. There's nothing wrong with it. Like, there's nothing wrong with the clutch or anything. That's just the noise this one makes. I figured I'd at least show you what I was talking about. That's the noise you have to deal with if you get the South Bend. Same thing if you're in, like, if your RPMs are too low when you go into, like, certain gear, it's gonna do that too. Like, if I'm below 50, and I go from fourth to fifth, it'll and do that too. It'll clanging a little bit oh, I read that's normal that's just how they are but this clutch is pretty loud when you let, let it out in neutral so would I recommend it yeah if you can get over the noise like I have now that time's gone by you just kind of get used to it yeah it's a great clutch it's not that expensive sorry about that it, overall I would recommend it I would say if you're looking for an upgrade either do South Bend or Velair. I can't really Sorry, the text message. I can't really tell you how the Valair is because I've never driven or used a truck with a Valair. But I've heard they're pretty good. And the South Bend, you know, I have one. So I'd have to say it's it's all right. It really is, again, it's just, if, sorry. If you can get over the noise aspect, you'll be fine. Because it does make a bit of noise. But that's really all I got for you guys today. I'm sorry all my videos have been short lately. We're on hold on the Subaru because the heads are at the shop, if you saw my last video. So we're still, we can't really do anything right now. Here sits the motor, waiting and waiting. And I actually did call yesterday and find out that it won't be till next week that I'll have them back. Um, so we're waiting on that. We're waiting to get parts for it because the parts shop, or the machine shop, is on my way to the my local Subaru dealer so it's on my way there why would I go all the way down there to get parts when I can't even do anything with them so I'll just make it all one trip so we're on hold with the Subaru and that's really about it 
Can't really do much with that. The Mustang is parked for the year, so we're not doing anything with that. Except, I might be, I might, might, might get a different exhaust for it. I'm not entirely sure yet. Um, I might get a different exhaust for the Mustang because it is loud. Uh, the black truck is still for sale. I don't know, I'm having a hell of a time selling it. If anybody's interested, let me know. Um, so black truck's for sale, Subaru's waiting on a motor and all the parts for it. Mustang's parked for the year because it's now middle of January and they've been salting the hell out of the roads because it's actually supposed to snow tonight. I don't know if it will or not. I mean, it will, but anyway, I, I get a little irritated about the snow around here because they'll say like three inches, then we get six, or they'll say six and we get like two. Weathermen have no idea what they're doing. No offense if any of you guys watching this are weathermen, but like, I want your job, seriously. And you know, the usual, like, comment, Subscribe for sure, and I will see you guys later.